is your family, this is SP News Magazine. Today, you guys, we're going to talk about the update on the Anaya Blanchard case. You guys know that they found those remains, and we were waiting for the identification that if it was her or if it wasn't her. And you guys, they came out with the results that the remains are Anaya Blanchard's remains. Confirmation. They are her remains. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to share these updates with you. What's going on on that case? Here we go. Across the area, the body of Anaya Blanchard positively identified today after being found Monday in Macon County. Tonight, Anaya's friends remembering the Homewood High School graduate. WVTM 13's Bria Douglas joins us. You talked to one of her longtime friends, Bria. Guy, I sat down with Trey Rouse. He and Anaya grew up together from their days of playing on the same youth basketball team. I just broke down. I mean, even though I had an idea that it was coming, it was just nothing but tears. Reaction from Trey Rouse when officially finding out his best friend was gone. It was a friendship first formed on the basketball court when they were little. First practice, you know, we just started talking. We, we, we just had an instant connection. And, I mean, second practice, she was... She was out there, you know, helping me, basically, with everybody else in the second grade. From elementary school to high school, the bond between the two continued. Her smile was just infectious. You walk, you walk down the hall at Homewood High School, you know, two, two years ago when she graduated, and basically that whole hall lit up. Now, the world less bright without Anaya's smile. All because of dark forces her mother, Angela Harris, warned about last night. Nothing you do can can prepare you for some evil that is out there, y'all. I could hear Anaya speaking through her mom to everybody, giving everybody a heads up. Three people are charged in connection with Blanchard's disappearance. And in the midst of Rouse's grief and anger, he has one question for the suspects. I just asked why. That's... That, that's all that I would ask, you know. Lost, I'm at a, a really truly, I'm at a loss for words. I'm just, just the main thing is why. The medical examiner is still working to determine the cause and manner of Blanchard's death, at which point additional charges could be coming. The reason the judge ordered Yazi to submit that DNA sample is because the Alabama Department of Forensic Science determined male DNA was found in Blanchard's car, and the state wants to compare his DNA with the one found inside the car. The judge also denied a motion to consider Yazid's bond and found probable cause to send the, this case to the grand jury. Now, to get into some of those new details talked about in court this morning. First off, when Yazid walked into the courtroom, he looked at Blanchard's family and simply shook his head. Investigators with the Auburn Police Department say Yazid walked into the Auburn convenience store where Blanchard was last seen first and spotted her from inside. Then they say a witness saw Yazid forcefully put Blanchard into her SUV and drive off with her inside. When, when that witness was later questioned, police say he broke down in tears because he felt remorseful for not speaking up sooner. Last week, Yazid's attorney filed a motion for his client to be granted bond, but the district attorney argued that should not happen. Mr. Yazid has, by my count, 26 prior arrests, several A felonies. Um, but even after all that, he was on bond when this occurred. He left uh, Alabama while he was under bond, which is a violation of his bond condition from Montgomery. He fled to Florida, got new charges, attempting to elude. The judge denied the motion and Yazid will remain in jail. A gag order is in place on this case, and the judge says they will consider lifting that case on the hearing on December the 4th.
answering questions Mr. Ibrahim may have. And it's my understanding that Mr. Ibrahim has indicated that uh, he desires to waive extradition and go back to Auburn to face charges. If that's true, Your Honor, under the circumstances, this, this hearing is as simple as having him acknowledge that and acknowledge that's what he wants to do and sign the waiver of extradition paperwork and, and uh, move forward. So the court basically needs to determine that that's what he wants to do, is my understanding. All right. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim, is that how I pronounce it? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Judge Clark, and we're here for an extradition hearing. Alabama has uh, determined that they would, they'd like to extradite you. And, Mr. Edmonds, can you please advise the defendant of the crime? It's homicide, uh, Mr. Ibrahim. It's okay. the charge. And you have the right to an attorney. I've, I've asked the public defender's office to come be here with you today to help you. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm informed that it's not on side. It's a kidnapping, Mr. Ibrahim. I apologize for that mistake. Would you like me to appoint the services of an attorney to help you today? She's to advise asking, you? She's asking if you want me to talk to her. Would you like an attorney to help you understand your rights? Um, okay. I'll I'm, I understand my rights. Um, if, be very careful about you. You really shouldn't talk. Yes, I would advise you to remain silent because anything you say could be used against you or be recorded, okay? So you have the right to waive extradition. If so, Alabama can go ahead and come and get you. If you decide not to waive extradition, then I'll set a court date out in 30 days, and that'll give Alabama the opportunity to pursue extradition. And you may want to speak to um, your counsel about your options. Scott Richard for the Public Defender's Office, Your Honor. We, we have actually had an opportunity to speak. Uh, I, I met with him just before uh, Your Honor came in. Um, it, it is true that, that we are going to waive extradition. I am going to make a request on behalf of his behalf. He would really like to be able to make a phone call. Uh, I, I know that may not be totally under your power, but if you could at least recommend that he be given the opportunity to make a phone call. But otherwise, we're, we're not challenging extradition. Okay. What's the state's position? We have no objection that the investigating authorities don't. We'd like for him to waive extradition there here, Your Honor, and you can go on back, Mr. Ibrahim, uh, to Auburn today. Okay. And then uh, hopefully they will uh, allow you to make that phone call. We can't require them to, but I would request, if possible, they allow you to do that as well. Uh, I would have no objection to that. Okay, so, um, Mr. Ritchie, do you need any more time to speak with Mr. Ibrahim. Uh, no, no, ma'am. Can I, can I ask you something? Be very careful. I mean, why, why I can't make a phone call to let my family know I'm okay? I have no objection to that. Excuse me, one second. It looks like I'm going to need to take a recess. Um, excuse me, one second. We'll be in recess for a minute. Your Honor, I'm going to also repeat the request on the record that he be given an opportunity to make a phone call. Yes, sir. I have no objection to that. I don't have any control over the authorities that um, that come and get you from Alabama, Mr. Ibrahim, but I would have no objection to him making a phone call. I just don't know how to do I mean, I'm, a, I'm, I'm in custody now. We've had an opportunity to discuss it and I've addressed the issue. Okay.